Good morning, everyone. Uh, fancy seeing you here. We are here in the beautiful city of Brussels. We're gonna be spending a couple of days eating all sorts of goodies, such as fries, traditional Belgian food, chocolate, waffles, and more. But first, for breakfast, we're gonna be hitting up a very famous sandwich place called Tonton Garbi. And yeah, we're very excited to see what Brussels has to offer. Let's go. Look at the sign. I mean, hey. <laughs> Thank you very much for waiting. I'm not ready, but you're welcome. Just come. Thank you. Just have a seat. Give me just one second. Oh, thank you. Everything you. you are home. Take your time. Thank, thank you very much. <laughs> First of all, thank you very much, Philippine or New Zealand. Yeah. Well, my name is Gabi. Gabi is my name. Toto means uncle. Ah. The brother of your father. Mm. One thing is important to see you living smiling. The rest oh, yes. is not important. If you like, you pay. You don't like, you don't pay. I'm going to ask a lot of questions so I know exactly what you like. Mm. And after that, I'm going to propose you something. But I never push you to choose something. We just share information. Okay, I go there. Alright, we're here at probably what is probably the uh, happiest place on earth. Um, we're here at uh, Tonton Gabi, who's been here since 2010, slinging uh, sandwiches far and wide. He gave us the whole rundown of all the cheeses and sandwiches and fillings, you know, making sure that we uh, get the perfect sandwich, the optimal, optimal experience. Honestly, I haven't even taken a bite. But, like, this is already one of the best food experiences. I've already had. Yeah, we got a couple of sandwiches to share and some hot chocolates. Let's eat. First sandwich. This one has a papaya cheese, but it also has pear and a Belgium chorizo. So this one, it's like not as spicy or strong compared to like the Spanish one. Apparently, it's more of a mild cheese. That is so good. Getting all the flavors that I like. It's like sweet, salty, creamy. Yeah, definitely not too sweet with the cheese. This is so good. Yeah. All right, next sandwich. I think it comes with some oh walnuts, but it looks like some crumbly sheep's or goat's cheese, some type of berries, some spicy cheese as well. Mm. Yeah, that's definitely either like a sheep or goat cheese. It has like that tang, but that's delightful. It also has some, uh, has a drizzle of honey, which I really like. The bread as well is amazing. So fluffy and crispy yeah, and perfect. Really the combination here is yet again amazing. It's like sweet, tangy, nutty, mm -hmm. a bit spicy. I love this. Oh wow. Okay, moving on to the next sandwich. It has a hard cheese, a creamy soft cheese, an olive tabanade, tomatoes, and chorizo. But this one's gonna be a bit stronger compared to the papaya one, which I love, so it might be a bit out of my comfort zone. Mm. That is also an excellent sandwich. The cheese is not like too overpowering, but you can taste its different characteristics. <laughs> Creamy, you can get a bit of that acidity from the tomato, slight saltiness and savoriness from the cheese and the chorizo, and the olive tapenade adds a bit of that like brininess to it. And again, this bread is just so perfect. It doesn't like hurt the roof of your mouth or your gums which I appreciate. This is great. Last uh, sandwich of this amazingly beautiful experience. This one's an omelet uh, sandwich. Um, we asked for a spicy and a salty cheese and some onions as well. It's all mixed into the omelet. Looks very beautiful. Mm. This sandwich is definitely all about the omelet. The cheese is just like a, it's just there, like that slightly spicy and uh, salty nose at the back. The onions give it a really nice acidity to it as well. Mm. Uh, this one's like definitely bre breakfast vibe because it's egg. I wish more hospitality joints um, had this much passion and love to the customers and to the food that they're sharing. Yeah, the world would be a happier place for sure. Also, ending it on a sweet, uh, let's see if it's sweet. This is their uh, hot chocolate. They actually make it with a actual real chocolate bar. So it's not powder, which is how I like it. Oh yeah, that is nice. 70% dark chocolate. It's just about that smoky dark chocolate. 
You can't beat this on a cold winter's day. Some lovely sandwiches made with passion and love. It's a warm, hot chocolate. There's so much more I could express just from this little one hour visit of ours. But all I can say is that Pet Tonton Garbi up is such a legendary place full of passion and love. You love to see it. All right, thank you. Have a nice day. Good trip. Yes, yes. All right, thank you. That was great. We really felt uh, welcome in there. You know, felt like we're part of their family. But yes, that is a very hard act to follow. But first, we're just gonna be doing some sightseeing before lunchtime. Uh, it's time to visit. See that, Yambi? No. Sun's out for Locavore. Oh yes, sun's out. Sun's out for Locavore. Let's go. What I find really interesting as well about Brussels because like we didn't really know what to expect because if you notice Brussels is like a, basically a mix of uh, Dutch and French culture you've got the Flanders the Flemish Dutch speaking north and then you've got Wallonia which is the French speaking uh, part of Belgium and then you've got Brussels which is technically in Flanders but it's just kind of a mix of both cultures but yeah we find ourselves here at the Grand Market, the main tourist attraction of uh, Brussels, and it's absolutely beautiful. Its current form wasn't really established until after the 17th century, because I believe back in 1695, um, French forces actually bombarded this whole uh, medieval square. Yeah, over the centuries, this square has been redeveloped, redesigned into the beautiful, beautiful buildings you see today. And it is honestly one of the most beautiful town squares I've ever seen in my life. Wow. Yeah, I agree. It's very beautiful. I, yeah. <laughs> I, you make it sound like I'm joking. No, I, just, I can go, see your go, judgment. Go, go, go I really appreciate this architecture. You know, it makes it feel yes. otherworldly. Yes, the Baroque architecture. Yeah, I love Baroque architecture. So I'm loving this and the yes. gold accents and the way the sun is hitting the yes. buildings. It's beautiful yes. architecture. All right, Yami, because it is highly likely that we might not be able to attend the Harry Styles concert in uh, Auckland. I'm just going to serenade you with some tunes. Very fitting for this location. Oh, one, two, three, go. Golden, 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 golden as I open my eyes. I can't believe we're the Harry Styles. Harry, Harry, I know you're watching this. I know you're a fan of Locavore. You can hit us up with some free tickets. Ticketmaster, you can go off yourself. Honestly, like we had tickets and the... <laughs> Yambi, look. Yeah. So Yambi, thoughts on the mannequin piss, the symbol of uh, Brussels? Yeah, it's crack up. Yeah. Definitely a symbol, right? It's definitely one of the statues of all time. Did you know that's actually not the real thing? It's a replica. And the actual mannequin piss is stored in the Brussels Museum, which is the, the, the Gothic building that we saw in the Grand Palace. Because people keep on vandalizing it. Anyway. <laughs> All right, here we are at the Cathedral of uh, St. Michael in St. Gudula. It is the main cathedral here in Brussels. It is an absolutely towering beast. Amazing, amazing architecture. Let's try to go inside. Now, this is definitely a bit more different style cathedral than we've been visiting in uh, Munich or Amsterdam. I really love the haunting yet very towering gothic uh, architecture. The vaulted ceilings are absolutely magnificent. The way the sun strikes on the stained glass is just otherworldly. The organ as well that hangs on the main hall of the cathedral is definitely a sight to see as well. Yes, the clock has struck 12 and that can only mean one thing and one thing only, it's lunchtime. Hello, 
as a precaution, um, Funky Town is playing right behind me in the speaker, so I'm gonna try to use the phone mic. But we are here at, I'm gonna butcher the pronunciation, it's called The Delder Gook. Actually, the main reason why I chose this place was because they serve horse steak, which is actually a specialty of one of the Belgian towns in the area. Uh, we got a few Belgian classics. Let's eat. All right, Michael Jackson's tea heeing behind me. Hope we don't get copyright strike for it, but the dishes actually look amazing. We got a couple of goodies. All right, the horse. You can choose a couple of sauces, but we got a little mushroom sauce. Let's pour that down. I'm gonna add, uh, I'm gonna leave one section unscathed so we can actually taste it by itself. Oh yeah. Okay, let's taste the tiniest bit first because I've never had um, horse before. Yay! <laughs> It just tastes like beef. I don't really know what part of the horse this is, but you know, it's decent. Maybe I'll try some of the mushroom sauce. Hmm, that's good. It's well cooked. That's an experience, all right. I'm sorry. Uh, what's a famous horse's name, Yami? Shadow facts. Yeah. Okay, you know we couldn't go to Brussels without having a stomp. What a cool name, stomp. But yeah, this is just a sausage with a dark sauce, and I believe, is this mashed potatoes? It looks a bit orange, but let's just give it a go. Oh, yes. It's giving porky, simple meaty sausage, which I very much like. I like that. I like that a lot. Okay, let's get some mashy on there, some sauce, some arugula. Mm. Yeah, that's great. I'm very happy with this dish. You know, chase it with a fry. Next one is the volovant, which I believe is some sort of pastry with a creamy topping of chicken. As you can see, there's like a little pastry button down here. Maybe, let's get some pastry. Oh, it looks extra, extra creamy and velvety. It's got some mushrooms as well, and some herbage on top. It's kind of dry, not gonna lie, but there's always the sauce to uh, sauce it back up. Okay. Mm, I feel like it needs a bit more salt and pepper. Mmm, much better. It brings out that uh, the creamy savoriness that I really like. That's pretty decent. The last dish is a Ghent watered soy. It definitely looks like a creamy, creamy soup with the aforementioned salmon. When in Brussels, mussels is the name of the game. Let's taste the uh, thing by itself first. Mmm, reminds me of a, seaf a light seafood chowder. But first, I'm gonna get some uh, mussels. Drop that down. <laughs> mm. It's really good, nice and creamy and basic and um, heartwarming and rustic. You got some potatoes in it as well. Mm. It's a seafoody, seafoody party. Yami, you're gonna hate me for this. Are you satisfied with your meal? I guess it's time to stop. I guess it's time to stop horsing around. And it's time to get going. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're coming out of the dungeon. It was a great lunch at a uh, Watch Your Head. But yeah, you know, if you're wanting some decent food in a very, like, it's literally right outside me, the, the Grand Palace. So, like, it's in a very touristy location, but it's actually, like, pretty decent, especially considering the touristy location. Quite the busy waffle place. We got our waffles.
Waffles. We're here at Mason Dandoy Dandoy, however you pronounce it. But we got two waffles, and they're looking very golden, very glorious. They offer two different kinds. They have the classic Belgian one, Brussels. This one has a butter salted caramel with whipped cream and candied hazelnuts. And then of course we also had to get a liege waffle. That one has some crunchy speculoos and also whipped cream. But yeah, I think I reckon we should go for the classic. The, the Brussels one. Oh yeah. We don't want to put too many toppings just because you know, I don't want to get too sugared out. Alright, that is looking really nice. <laughs> mm, that light crispness to it. Yeah, this one is so much lighter. So much like airier and fluffy. That is good. And that caramel like isn't too much, it's not too overpoweringly sweet and the hazelnuts add a really nice crunch to it. Now I am very excited to dig into their liege waffles. I think out of all the waffles in the world, that is my favorite genre of waffle. Like it's good by itself, it's good with toppings, it's good with cream. You can already tell like cutting into it, it is a much thicker waffle. But let's just let's just try it first. Oh, look just look how beautifully golden that is. If only we had the sunlight to kind of enhance its beauty, but Wait. No. Mm. that texture so good. Not too sweet. It has a more bread-like texture, which I quite love. And this speculoos, it just adds like the perfect crunchiness. Yeah, and the cream. Oh yeah. You'll love to see it. And it also has like that nice crunch from the actual waffle itself. You know, like the crystallized, not crystallized, the caramelized outside. So yum. Mm. Like, ever since we arrived in Belgium, suddenly I have a massive sweet tooth just because I love waffles so much. But basically, the quick ish rundown on what the two differences are for the two waffles. If you get a more traditional Belgian waffle, it has that traditional, like, more of a rectangular shape. It's much lighter, it's much more airy and crisper, and the batter itself is more wet when you make it. Whereas with the liege, the liege is more like a bread dough. Because like, I made liege waffles before, and it's very much more similar to making like a brioche dough which is why it's so much thicker so they're both good it just depends what your preference is hey we are here now at the uh at the royal quarter just uphill from the uh, grand palace the city center it is an absolutely beautiful view right now in golden hour you know you got the bus here you got the grand palace just right in front of us staring in front of us like a landmark it's always nice to see a city from above like you know, amsterdam was quite flat you know there was yeah, there's like a low uphill a yeah, mixture of modern buildings and traditional buildings you know brusselization yeah just relaxing brussels walking time What a nice view. Oh, not that view. Nice view. Ah, public elevator. How handy. All right, we've been doing a lot of walking, so past this uh, fritturi, which is called Fritur Pita de la Chapelle. Why not get a little snack? It's a little cheeky first bite of uh, Belgian fries. It's just like a street stall. You, you love the vibe. Just right next to the cathedral. Right too close to the gaggle of pigeons over there. They don't have the audacity of seagulls, so that's fine. This looks amazingly golden. And of course, uh, we got the mayo. Just keeping it basic for now. I think this looks quite golden and uh, this is the chosen one. Oh yeah. It's just built different. There's just some je ne sais quoi about it that makes it different from your standard like vegetable oil fried fries. This is also the thing that, um, what's the French name? Uh, hello, my name is uh, Jul oh, Julia Child. <laughs> Julia Child used to go on about the olden days McDonald's fries because one day they switched from beef tallow to vegetable oil because of like health reasons, even though it started to prove like a hoax. Yeah, she used to go on about how back in the day McDonald's fries 
were so much better and flavorful because they were fried in beef tallow. And I believe this is also the reason why in like in Belgium and Amsterdam, fries are just so damn good because they are fried in that that delicious, delicious uh, fat of the animal. Mm, great texture, crispy, but also has a nice fluffy inside. I like the mayo as well. It's not like best foods mayo. You can really tell the difference at all because the the fries that we had for lunch at Teak, it's oh, okay. it tasted like vegetable oil fried. It just tasted like nothing. Oh, look, nothing. You know I mean? I'll feed you one. Okay. How's it? Oh. It's, like, it's, it's different to the fries a while ago, right? Yeah, I like a bit more flavor. It's the small details that make Belgian fries so great. Um, yeah, let's walk back to the apartment and burn these fries off so I can get some more fries for dinner. Let's go. All right, while we rest here in the hotel and Yambi's on the on the ticky world, there, let me show you the view of our apartment. Cause, come on. L oh, focus, G GH6, come on. Come on. Look at that, it's the Grand Palace. That is a view worth paying for. And there, there in the distance is the Justice Courts of Brussels and the Ferris wheel where we were just a while ago. Anywhere is going to appreciate this view a bit more and then it's on to dinner time. All right, um, we took the metro out around the uh, EU parliament, a completely different feel compared to the old town. But yes, we are on the hunt for some more French fries at a legend. Uh, Sorry, no, 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 not French fries, but a more Belgian fries at a very legendary institution called Maison Antoine. Let's go. All right, we got the bag. It's in the bag. We got the Maison Antoine goods. Find somewhere to eat. I low-key feel like we just got out of a takeaway from New Zealand. Like the odors are are the same. It's like the stuff that you get at the at the chippy. We should have gotten more sauce because this is not gonna be enough. Fun fact: uh, Angela Merkel, the previous chancellor of Germany, um, was a frequent at Maison Antoine because Maison Antoine is actually quite near the European Parliament. So you know. Our girl Angela would get her chippy fix at Maison Antoine. So, you know, it must be a goodie then. Oh, look at that. Look at the golden fries, fried to perfection and also fried to order. Fries. Oh yeah, that is a good, good fry. The beef tallow is coming through the double fry. It's coming through. We love some mayo. It has a little tang, which I quite like. The picky hot. I have no idea what it is. Yeah, I think that's some sort of mustard. It's very interesting. And I feel like we've bitten more than we can chew because this is the famous Belgian mitraillette. Mitraillette. Or the submachine gun. It's basically whatever filling you want in a baguette-looking uh, long bun, and it's loaded with the fries. I don't think I can finish this. Like, we've had quite a lot of food today, but we're gonna try, we're gonna try. I think I got it with a merguez, um, which is a sausage and some pili pili sauce. Maybe if I open it up. Oh yeah, there's the, there's the, there's the sausage, there's the tail end of it. It's got, like, a lettuce leaf. We love to see that. How do we even do this? Let's just try to get a bite. Oh, yeah. Okay, one more. I'm just trying to process it. As a concept, it didn't sound so like otherworldly, but actually seeing it now, I'm like, what if I caught it myself into? Street food at its finest, you know, just like super junk foody, comforting stuff. Everything that's fried and savory and salty and nice. Quite literally like ultimate late night food. It's the perfect night for it because you know, it's, uh, it's getting late. I also feel like a mitraillette is only really possible with Belgian fries. If it was anything else, anything vegetable oil fried, it wouldn't work. You know, we talk big about uh, doing carbon carb action because of us being Filipino, but when it comes to like 
Reich not being involved now, I'm like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> but this is a beast. Uh, how do I even... Mm. That sausage is good. It's a little bit spicy. Also has a bit of protein for my small brothers. Oh, uh, also, if you didn't know this, in the sandwich we got a uh, patty peri sauce. Added a nice creamy spiciness to the already spicy Mergus sausage. What a... What a submachine gun indeed, you know? Slinging bullets of delicious fries. Angela Merkel. She's a bit of a foodie. What a way to end the night here at Maison Antoine near the EU Parliament. I'm gonna sleep now. Good night. Alright friends, we have made it back to the apartment and with that I'm gonna end the video there but what an amazing first day of exploring the beautiful city of Brussels and its beautiful food culture. Yeah, does the does the waffles get your seal of approval? Yeah. 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 <laughs> anyway, we've got another full-on day here in Brussels exploring the beautiful city and its food. But yes, uh, thank you for watching another one of our food and travel videos live from Brussels and the Grand Palace. And see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. Golden. That's not very Belgian, is it?